Welcome to another edition of Zeek in Action. I'm your host, Richard Baitlick, and in today's video, we're going to examine the four types of network security monitoring data. I'm going to draw upon a slide that I presented at Zeek Week in my keynote earlier this month of October 2021. And then I'm going to take a look at network security monitoring data using a tool called CloudShark. Now, CloudShark is a commercial tool, but the creators of it uh, authorized me to demonstrate how to use it. And I like it as an interface to display the four different types of network security monitoring data. So what are those four types of network security monitoring data? Well, over the years, I've had different definitions. Uh, the, there's been some core types. I've added a few, I've removed, removed a few, but uh, these are the four versions that I've settled upon as being the most uh, representative and the clearest forms of data that we can use. They are full content data, what many people refer to as PCAP based on the uh, packet capture format, transaction logs, and transaction logs are probably best understood as the types of data that you would get from uh, open source software like Zeek, extracted content, which is a subset of full content, and it is uh, generally understood to be the files that are transferred between systems. Again, this is a function that uh, Zeek can provide. And then finally, intrusion detection system alerts, or what I consider to be a judgment. Uh, generally, an IDS alert is a judgment or an opinion based on some type of signature or other type of heuristic that a programmer has used to determine that uh, generally something is considered suspicious or malicious. You don't have to write IDS alerts that are strictly based on suspicious or malicious activity. It could be something completely benign, but that's the general idea behind an IDS alert. Um, and I've got some of, the, some of my book covers here where over the years I've, I've uh, t taken a look at the different versions. Um, the first book I ever included the NSM data types in was the fourth edition of Hacking Exposed, which I believe came out perhaps in 2003 when I was a consultant at Foundstone for uh, Kevin Mandia. And then I explored these NSM data types quite a bit in my uh, 2004 book, uh, The Dob Network Security Monitoring. Uh, I expanded them quite a bit in the 2013 book, The Practice of Network Security Monitoring. Uh, and since then, I've pared them down to the four that you see here, and the, they appeared in my uh, book that I published last year, uh, the one of the four volumes of the Best of DOS Security Blog. So that's the background of the four data types, and now let's take a look at those data types. And like I mentioned, I'm going to be using a web-based interface to packet data called, uh, called CloudShark. And if you would like, you can go to this free instance of CloudShark online. Um, you can just go to the URL that's listed here, and, and perhaps we can add that into the, the show notes uh, as, the, as they were. Um, the idea behind CloudShark is it is a tool that the developers uh, created in order to encourage a common place to hold your packet captures and a common set of tools for investigating them. And it began more or less, as my, my understanding, as sort of a web-based version of uh, uh, Wireshark, but then has since incorporated other NSM capabilities. And we'll take a look at a few of them here. And all four of the NSM data types are represented, which is, which is really handy. Now, uh, when you go to something like uh, this interface, which is... Uh, apparently, someone has uploaded to their personal instance of CloudShark um, one of, it looks like one of Brad Duncan's uh, malware PCAPs. So he puts together different traffic analysis exercise PCAPs and, and uh, provides them on his website. And apparently, someone here has uploaded their this exercise to their CloudShark instance. And uh, you can make, uh, as a CloudShark user, you can make your, pa your packet captures open for the world like this. Um, as a guest viewer, I can't delete it or change it or upload or download, or I could probably download, but I can't do anything with it here. So this is a, a safe way for us to interact with this uh, PCAP and not have any, uh, any real issues. 
So the first thing you'll notice when you come to the, the basic interface or the, the standard interface is you have a, an, an interface to uh, what looks like uh, packet, uh, individual packets. So this is what you would get as something like, uh, like Wireshark. So if you want to, you can you know, scroll down through these. You can take a look at, uh, looks like you've got a, some type of HTTP session here. Here you've got a GET request. And in this display, you're essentially seeing um, something very similar to what you would get with, with Wireshark, except it's all in a, in a web-based interface. And uh, following on the themes of, of my keynote uh, for Zeek Week uh, recently, the information density or the data density here is very high. Uh, sure, there is some, some white space here because uh, there's no server name for a lot of these, these fields. Um, because that's something that is generally associated with uh, SSL. But otherwise, you've got a nice, you know, a lot of data being packed into a small amount of space, which I really like. Now, just with this individual display, you begin to see some of the disadvantages of just working with full content data. You know, obviously, the advantage is you have every packet here. You have every detail, assuming you didn't drop any traffic when you were performing your packet capture, but you have all of this detail available to you. So if there's anything of any value, you can work with it here. And in some respects, this is uh, you know, the, most, the, the highest fidelity type of data that you could have. The problem is, uh, where do you start? Um, if you don't have a place to, to begin, if you don't have a pointer into this data, are you really just going to sort of scroll through it and see if anything catches your attention? This this is kind of a, one of the difficulties of, of packet capture data. Um, furthermore, are we truly getting the most value out of what we're seeing? For example, there is a ton of TLS encrypted data here, and I'm I can't do anything with it. It's just encrypted. So as I scroll through, you know, the question becomes: Is this the best form of data? to work with. It could be, depending on the use case that you have, but there may be other forms of data which might make a, a little bit easier for you to begin working with. Let me show you just a couple of things you can do from this display though. Um, here I'm just taking a look at, you know, th this is actually a, a situation where it would be nice if I were, if I could change the columns that are available. I think I might be able to do that with a profile, but I'm not going to do that because if I if I change the what, what's available here, and you're looking at something different on your own, then that might be uh, a little confusing. One of the things I can do though is I can actually I don't want to do that. There's no right click in this interface, which is kind of a a bummer. This is something that you're probably very uh, familiar with when you're using something like Wireshark. Here we have to do other sorts of analysis. So for example, um, let's say I wanted to follow this HTTP stream. I could say follow HTTP. And when I do that, now I have my first example of, uh, perhaps this is an example of extracted content. So this is in, back when the, in the days of, of Bam Vischer and Squeal, we would call this a transcript. Uh, actually, even the days of the Air Force, is we had the idea of, of a transcript. So here you can see the data sent from the client, a GET request, and you can see the reply uh, from the server. So you've got the headers, and then you've got the data itself. And what's kind of nice is you could, you know, obviously this is being rendered in ASCII. You could change it into a hex dump if you wanted, which is really cool if you're so inclined. Um, you could change to see just one side of the conversation or the other side of the conversation. So there's a lot of the features that you would have in something like Wireshark that are available here in CloudShark. Now, what if we didn't quite know what we were looking for and we wanted to see another way of, of looking at this data? You know, thus far we've looked at full content, we looked at a little bit of uh, extracted content. What about transaction logs? Is there such a thing here for CloudShark? And it turns out that there is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on analysis tools and I'm going to go down to Zeek logs. And we get a little summary of the Zeek logs that are available in this packet capture or that are associated with this packet capture. 
I'm going to say explore all logs, though. I could conceivably pick any one of the logs and go from there, but I'm going to say explore all logs, and that will give me another window, which I kind of like. So over here, I'm going to start with the con log. That's sort of the master index of transaction logs that Zeek provides. And now we can see that each one of these sessions has been rendered as a single record, and it becomes a little bit easier to see uh, what we're looking with. Now I'm going to decrease my display by just a little bit. So for example, the HTTP session I might have been looking at earlier, that looks like it's there. And when I click on any one of these fields, or uh, one of these records, I get the, the uh, zoom in on the Zeek data. Now what's really nice is, let's say I identified that HTTP session and I thought, oh, I want to see more about that. I can click on this view packets. And now I'm looking at the Back in, back in the CloudShark instance for the individual packets associated with that HTTP stream. So that's kind of nice. I can look at another one here. View the packets for that. So as you can see, when you're using the con log like this, it's kind of like a nice index to the overall data. In fact, let's do some searching. I'm just going to search for HTTP. And now we have all the HTTP sessions that are in the con log, which is great. I think this is a, an awesome feature. But what if we want to see something that's more interesting than simply you know, all of these, all of these uh, con log instances? Perhaps some files were transferred. And in fact, this is probably one that would be of interest. This is uh, an entry in uh, the PE log. And here we can see that there was some type of Windows executable that was transferred. Now what's interesting is that I can't go to the packets from this particular instance. I can click on the ID, so let's do that. And from there I can then collect, uh, click on the con UID. And that gives me that record. And from there, I can go into my view packets. And now I'm seeing the packets associated with the exe that was downloaded. And in fact, you can see the request for the exe here. And if I wanted to, I should be able to export this. So I could say, uh, well, that's unfortunate. I can't follow the HTTP. That's interesting. Let's see what happens if, that's, if I say follow that stream. So I do have the. Uh, the executable here, you can see it. This program cannot be run in DOS mode, and I put it into the hex dump. You know, there it is. There. It's too bad, though. I really wanted to be able to just follow that and get that exe. I really wonder why I can't do that. Nope, that's something different. So this might be a question for the uh, Wireshark, or excuse me, the CloudShark developers, and find out why I can't follow the HTTP stream and rip out that exe there. It's possible I don't have all of it. I wonder if, there, if it notices that. Although the file log should be able to tell me that. So let's go back and see if we can get to our our file log. Let's see. Here's our file log. That's really nice. You can just filter that. Let's see if we can sort on mine types. Yeah, we can. Really nice. I really like this interface a lot. Here is our exe again. There's our con UID. There's our file UID. Yeah, interesting. But as you can see, this is a pretty nice interface to the different types of NSM data you would have. So, for example, let's take a look at a couple others. Let's look at our weird log, unexpected multiple HTTP requests, inflate failed, possible split routing. That's interesting, split routing. That's a case where you have traffic in one direction coming in on uh, generally one 
or it's passing by the sensor, but you don't see the other side of it. Uh, so you need two sensors at each of the locations because of the way the uh, site may have done its, its BGP advertisements to the internet. Now, I didn't mention IDS alerts yet. So let's see what uh, this interface has for us in that respect. To get to IDS alerts, if we come down here and we click on threat assessment, which I'm, it's not my favorite uh, way to describe this, but let's go ahead and click on that. So we click on threat assessment. What's happening is Wireshark, or excuse me, CloudShark runs an instance of Suricata against the packet capture, and they use the emerging threats rule set. And here it looks like the emerging threats rule set from 2020 uh, 7 8 was used. And if I open the advanced analysis, let's see what we have. Now this is pretty clever. I have never, I, well, I've seen a lot in my day. <laughs> Uh, this, though, is one of the more interesting ways to show IDS alerts. What the developers have done is they show the individual alerts, and then they show what, is this a time frame? Let's scroll down. Yeah, we don't have a time frame. My guess is, what do we have here? These are IP addresses. So we have a time uh, window going down this way and then I guess this is a representation of perhaps the amount of traffic associated with each one or maybe a delay or let me see what are we looking at here You know what, actually, I think this is? This is a source to destination IP address. They're a little bit cut off because of the display. Let me see if I can make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I think what you can see now is this is the source address. And then if it's going to that IP address, you have that. In fact, let's uh, see if that's the case. So we have a 1001 and a 6552. Let's click on that. And yeah, there we go, 1001.95 talking to 6552.108.254. So this is the traffic that triggered this hash of use.ch, a possible TOFC alert that is part of the uh, emerging threats rule set. And I really like the way that this is displayed. So we've got our alert up here. We've got a timestamp. We've got the packet that generated it, packet 62. We have the contents of that packet available there, uh, as long as as well as our IPs and ports. We then have uh, a listing of the other alerts that are associated with this. So not only the possible Topsy, but also this possible malware, fake Firefox font update. Uh, and then we've got what rule set out of emerging threats triggered. So this is the JA3 rule set. Um, the JA3 rule set is the one that uses hash values um, on uh, SSL characteristics, and that's why apparently it's a match on hash up here. Then we've got some external references, and we've got our community ID with a link to the uh, community ID con log. And so let me open that in a new window, and then let me click on this. And oh, isn't that awesome? That takes us right to the con log entry for this, which means we can see all of the other activity if we're so inclined. So that's really, really nice. Okay, let me go back here. So that's our example of, of one of these alerts. Let's uh, take a look at another one. Actually, let me go back here. I'm going to say follow stream. Let's see what that does. So here we go. If we've wanted to follow the stream here, here you can see this is all SSL data. So if you can't tell <laughs> by my enthusiasm, I really like interfaces that allow you to pivot uh, from one type of NSM data to another. So you're not just stuck looking at full content packets, you're not just stuck looking at, at Zeek transaction logs, or you're just looking at IDS alerts. The ability to pivot from one form of data to another is really what makes it easy for the analyst, or easier for the analyst to try to figure out uh, what's going on. Here we have an alert for this PEEXE or DLL Windows download. And uh, you know, you've got two of them here. You've got uh, this alert, 
the category potential corporate privacy violation. And then you've got an executable retrieved with minimal HTTP headers, potential second stage download. Uh, and then of course, if you look up here in the traffic, you have your MZ header right there. And then this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So here's the download of the actual exe. Now, as far as grabbing this thing, let's see. If I say follow stream, and then if I say hex dump, you know, I guess theoretically, if I started grabbing here, and then if I were to export that into a file, you know, the whole thing, not just the little bit that I grabbed, but if I were able to export that into a file, I should be able to reconstruct the, the uh, exe. Um, there must be an easier way to do this because I can't imagine that the developers would provide all these capabilities but then miss on that one. So um, might be a good question for the for the CloudShark developers. Here you can see a bunch more alerts. These are all based on, um, these are all DNS requests it looks like. So this is a good example of of being able to transition from one form of NSM data to another. Um, and the way that the CloudShark team has chosen to represent these is pretty cool. Um, there's also a table view here, so I can just take a look at them. In fact, let's do that in a new window. I don't like when there's c confinement there. Here's all your alerts um, in a table. So if you didn't like the previous display, you could just go at a uh, really easy way to look at it here. Um, we can sort based on different values. I'm not a huge fan of sorting because when you sort, um, you're sort of arbitrarily deciding what might be important, what might not be important. Although sometimes when you, when you can sort like this, the alerts that appear the least often are the most interesting. Oh, this is really interesting. <laughs> Fake tech support or tech support phone scam landing. Let's take a look at that one. So what do we have here? That's interesting. So it must have based it on the contents of this. In fact, let's see if we can figure out how it knew what that was. Um, So it's, it's the same session. Now this is a case where I don't see, let me see, I don't see a way to see the actual alert. Not the alert, the, the actual rule. That's something that I would really like because if I don't see the rule, I don't necessarily know whether I can trust why the IDS chose this. You know, I, obviously I was able to take a look at the content here. Um, this, vi this virus is well known for complete identity and credit card theft, further action through this computer, et cetera, et cetera. Call Microsoft tech support, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I would like to know how the IDS chose to uh, display this activity. So that's a little bit of feedback, I guess, for the, the CloudShark developers. So, as you can see, you have easy access to these different forms of NSM data, and the idea was to have the four types of NSM data available to an analyst. So that PCAP data, whether you're looking at it as a list of packets or a uh, reconstruction of the stream, the transaction logs, which are generally all your different types of Zeek logs, whether they're the con log or HTTP log or DNS log, whatever. Extracted content, so when you find a particular PCAP of interest and you want to grab just the traffic associated with it, uh, like a file, like an EXE that might be, be uh, downloaded. And then finally, your IDS alerts. So the judgments that a, another system has made about what you may or may uh, not want to look at. So that's all for today's edition of Zeek in Action. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to know more about Zeek, please feel free to visit our website at zeek.org, Z-E-E-K dot O-R-G. And uh, from there, you can get access to our documentation. You can find out how to join our Slack. And our Slack is uh, pretty popular these days. A, a lot of people join, uh, drop in, ask questions, and we try to help as much as we can. 
So uh, with that, I have been your host, Richard Baitlick, and please stay tuned for the next edition of Zeke in Action.